that you can, we can get through this, we can get out of this, but it's going to take collective effort and not criticism. The Jill, doors to Bethune-Cookman University are not closing. No, ma'am. I have no plans for that happening. Because okay. I think that was part of the fear and part of the headline. Yes. You know, could Bethune-Cookman University fold? Could, could its doors close? I think that that's a very, at some point down the road, I, I mean, I couldn't predict that, but I don't see that happening anytime in the near future. But the caveat is that we've still got to work to address our issues. Uh, and that requires all of those stakeholders I just shared. It requires administration, it requires uh, the board, it requires our alums, it requires other stakeholders in this community. Uh, I think some people have given up on us. And there are people that have already written us off and say that, oh, you know, you, they're going to fall in a hole. I don't think so. That's not my leadership style. I'm a man of faith. Mm -hmm. I believe the same faith that got us from our founder having a dollar and 50 cents to start an institution which today you see it 86 acres and still going strong 114 years later, that same faith is going to help us to get there. But it also requires work. And that's what I'm committed to doing, to doing the work that's needed. John, can, you, oh, can you discuss the discrepancy of the embassy of host and the amount of $640,000 at this time? Or would you wait until the meeting? I think that in? probably has to be done at a board meeting. Okay, I just wanted to check that too. So you have nothing to add to or take away from at this point? That's correct. Thank you. Can what you is the future? That, that number is correct, the 640000 You know, I've heard several numbers that have been tossed around. so. You know, I, I don't know what that number is right at the moment. I've heard several numbers. So I've heard this number that she just shared. I've heard some other numbers too. So at this point, I, I can't confirm or deny. But that is a claim that's being investigated. Yes. The press release that was sent out last night specifically mentions an audit. How can we get our hands on that audit? Well, it has to go through the board first. Okay. So the board has to decide what they want to do in terms of releasing that. Along with transparency with the students, what is the future of us if you are terminated? being that we're on the probationary period. Well, probation, um, my leaving this position in and of itself does not automatically cause us to lose our accreditation. However, it can be viewed as instability in, for the institution. And so that becomes a factor for SACS to consider. Um, so in 20 Further, if you're talking about uh, bringing someone else in at this time, uh, it takes time for the next person to get seated. There are a lot of things that I have uh, found out, and it's taken me 15 months that I've been here. So the question becomes, is it in the school's best interest to bring somebody else in for this period of time, even in anticipation of the fact that they're going to bring in a permanent president, possibly at the end of the academic year? Well, if you're not going to share the audit with us, I want to make sure I understand the gist of what that document said. Can you explain that to us? I'm not quite sure which audit you're referring to, because there are a couple audits. We have our annual audit that goes before the board. Well, and we then received a press release that last night that said the interim president will address the findings of the audit, a potential lawsuit, and why the historic university is on the verge of extinction. Did, did you not send out that press release? No, that, no it didn't come out. Not with those words, no, I did not send out the press release. Okay, well, this came from a group called, um, somebody named Beth Co Cocharello. Okay. Is she working on the university's behalf? Uh, yes. Okay, well, she sent out a press release, that, and that's what it said last night, and I think that's why we're all here. Even though she may have sent that out, there are still some things that have to go through the board, and that part of it will be that audit well, for that <clears> review. Having said that, Judge, could you specifically address anything you think that could be done that would right the ship, so to speak? For example, you mentioned <clears throat> you're historically a private university. Would that have to change? Uh, the association with the Methodists, would that have to change? Is there anything you can give us concrete that you believe could turn things around? I think we all got to sit to the table. That's one of the things and we gotta decide which direction we're gonna take. Um, I can also tell you that during the course of my uh, meetings with the board, I've shared with them three strategies that I believe can help us to get the uh, financial house in order. Um, and that includes, uh, one was we deal with the lawsuit that's, that's ongoing that we filed in order to protect our students. Number two, the uh, working with the, uh, the bondholders that have that are standing in place with this particular the financing project. And finally, number three, to also utilize the services of some of our alums who have offered to assist us with helping to make contacts with people uh, on Wall Street that can help us with the refinancing. That's critical. Um, I think once we get that under our belt, 
then we're in a much better position to move forward and address the other issues that we have. What about the other two lawsuits? You've got a lawsuit against you as far as the uh, MLK law projects is concerned. You've got a, a foreclosure lawsuit against you by one of the big banks. What's the status of those lawsuits? The foreclosure part is a part of that uh, litigation with Quantum. Uh, it was filed by uh, Wells Fargo, and it is indeed a, uh, but it was Wells Fargo standing as a successor and the servicer of that loan. So that's a part of the uh, first lawsuit that we filed. It's just a, it's a counterclaim and independent action on that. The second part is um, the one that you talked about with the Heron Group still remains open. Uh, we don't have a court date on that yet, but we have uh, made a statement from the beginning that we would defend the university vigorously as it relates to that. The board has stated the board never uh, approved that deal, which was required. And of course, uh, you know, we're still moving forward on that. Uh, how do, how do you respond to the criticism that you your, your leadership is impaired as a consequence of the fact that you've been involved both as counsel, as interim president, and as an advisor to the board, and that you've been joined personally in a number of these lawsuits, documents attached to them in the case that you sign off on some of those documents. How do you how do you how do you uh, how do you respond to the issue of possible conflicts of interest with regard to your leadership? When I first saw that, I said it was a bunch of bunch of lies. Um, I would tell you that first of all, as a lawyer, we give advice, but clients make decisions. Secondly, I can tell you this, that I don't have any conflicts of interest as it relates to any of these dorm deals or things that were involved. Um, I also did not become general counsel of the university or university counsel, which is what my title was, until November 1st, 2015. That dorm deal was signed in April of 2015. And so there are those who have made these allegations and some, and some of the people that have made those allegations know that they're inaccurate, but they continue to make those allegations. I stand on my record, I stand on the fact that I was the uh, university counsel starting in November of uh, 2015, and so therefore I was not a part of that. Do you feel you've got the support of the Board of Trustees? Well, I guess we'll see on Thursday. Okay. I, can't, I can't fully answer that. Um, I can tell you this, that uh, yes, I think that we have a, uh, at least for a significant number, I believe that we have the uh, support going forward, and a number of them have been very actively involved with helping uh, to right the ship. A big part of what the board does in any uh, university setting is to raise money. Um, and there's a phrase that says you should either give money, get money, or get off. And um, I will tell you that uh, we are working to make sure that our board members fully understand that. And they need to help us with raising money, which is not just uh, with establishing contacts with other people and doing the things that need to be done to help strengthen our university. Judge, uh, the university has lost a lot of integrity uh, these past few years. I, I want to commend you. I've known you over 30 years. I've known you to be a man of ethics. Um, we have had some challenges here at this university and we will continue to have those. I feel as though we need to clean house completely and start from the very beginning so that we can get to the root of these problems and reinstate Bethune-Cookman as one of the greatest HBCUs in the country. How do you feel about that? Well, it depends on how you define cleaning house. Um, uh, the elimination of everyone who is a part of, and I call it the collusion, that might be a, a very harsh word, but everyone that's not here at this university for the best interest of these students. Yesterday, these students were crying on my shoulders. I had to talk to mothers because there was so much stuff going on. Our students don't need to be crazy. They need to be in the classroom, and they need to be entering to learn and depart to serve. Going into somebody's uh, 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 employment is not going to help with what's going on now. Our students are suffering mentally and emotionally, and we need to get together with all of these students. You need to address them in an open forum as well as the trustee board members and let them all come clean and let them know what's going on. Well, I, I appreciate your, your comment. I will say this, that we have made a lot of changes in this timeline. There are a number of employees who were here this time a year ago that are not here any longer. Mm -hmm. uh, when we find that there is some issue that needs to be addressed, we do our best to address that. Uh, sometimes that means people don't like me for making those decisions, but I think I've been making decisions for about 30 some years of my career. So, you know, we'll continue to do what we believe is right 
uh, as long as I'm here in this institution. And uh, to the extent we talk about our students, um, we have always had an open relationship with our students here on campus. Uh, we, you know, go out and we're around the campus. We walk around the campus. We're in the cafeteria. We're in the sports arenas. We're in the library. We're, we're in the places where the students are. And certainly to the extent that we can calm those who feel that they're fearful of what's going on, um, there are some things that we can do to help that. And uh, we've been very open. We've had a number of town hall meetings with both faculty and staff uh, in our uh, chapel uh, to answer, openly answer questions addressing these types of issues. And certainly I don't have a problem doing the same thing with the students. Uh, primarily we've relied upon student leadership to convey that message. And I think last night it was a group of about uh, 20 of them that came to me and asked. Uh, they had a number of very intelligent questions and we responded to those questions. And they seem to leave there with some satisfaction that things are moving in the right direction. So we'll continue to do that. There, there's a concept in the law of uh, mere uh, to, uh, to avoid the mere uh, appearance of impropriety. Uh, also, as you know, as being a judge, that's, that's one of the, the one of the re, one of the requirements of being a judge. Uh, would you be willing to resign uh, to to avoid the mere appearance of impropriety with regard to conflicts of interest, etc.? Mr. Cherry, that's your statement. That's not mine. I would no, it's a that. question. It's a question. Well, I'm just saying this. You uh, you raised that issue and said that you believe that I have some level of uh, involvement. I've said to you many times, and I, and I stand by what I've said, that I have no conflict of interest as it relates to all of these things that you're talking about. The, com the uh, And even you published some things in your paper that even talked about my wife. Uh, I can tell you this, that we have been lovers of the film Cookman for over 30 years, and we will continue to do everything that we can. Uh, I can also tell you that I had a great career as a judge, and the issue of whether or not there was ever any issue of integrity violations has never occurred in my career. And if I felt that there was something that there was a conflict, then I would, I would not hesitate to uh, take the appropriate action. With all due respect, Judge, that's not responsive to the question. The I question so. was talked about, talking about the mere impropriety, uh, the mere appearance of impropriety. Secondarily, well, without with regard, wait a minute, let me finish. Regard to your wife, I indicated in full, in full, uh, 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 in, in open kinds of uh, idea that your wife was related to me by marriage. Mm -hmm. That's what I said about your wife. Well, that wasn't what somebody else said that was published in your paper. No, well, that, that, that you can read the paper yourself. I did, I did. But as it relates to the appearance of impropriety, there first of all has to be an appearance. And I don't think that there is an appearance of impropriety. Okay, that answers my question, appreciate it. Okay. Yes. Uh, do you believe all members of the board who are not willing to address these issues in the I, I'm sorry, could you? I'm sorry, do you, do you believe that all members of the board who are not looking for the best interests of the university and the students have been removed? Well, you know, if it's, not, how would you it's kind of hard to talk about your bosses like that. I mean, I, I think that there are some, uh, I think that there are some, obviously there are some differences that I have. In fact, a couple of the former trustees made some statements in the newspaper that I, I definitely disagree with that was in the paper on yesterday. Um, and there probably also need, there's a need to make some adjustments here. Um, and I guess that's gonna determine what the board seeks to do. Thank you, sir. Is, is the school under criminal investigation? No. I can tell you this, that we have cooperated with every governmental agency. In fact, I will also tell you that we initiated contact with the federal authorities about the dorm deal. Uh, we published that in the, uh, in the local newspaper here uh, probably at least a month ago or longer and uh, we initiated that contact and asked them to take a look at it because we believe that uh, there were some improprieties there that could very well raise to the level of possible criminal involvement and so that's under review. Judge Grimes, could you provide any further details about the federal or state investigation? Into the dorm I, don't, I don't have any updates on it at this time uh, and you know they sort of take their own time in making those decisions, but I just can tell you that they're reviewing it. Okay. Judge, do you feel as though some of your staff may be holding positions, I would say somewhat that are maybe insignificant, uh, exuberant salaries on this campus are being uh, received by those who are not in those positions that are quality positions for these students or other 
staff and professors, have you revisited the status of employees on this campus we recently? Have, if you, you said exuberant salaries? Yeah, just okay, uh, okay, exorbitant. Okay, I over a hundred thousand dollars, and they sit in their offices and they're not responsive to the students or to you or to anyone else. Well, let's just say that we currently do have a pay study, pay equity study going yeah. on that's going to help us to make the, what we believe to be the appropriate adjustments. Mm -hmm. Some of those adjustments have already been made. Some of them are scheduled to take effect on January 1, and uh, we're looking at all those things as things that need to be adjusted. Thanks. Typically, the role of an interim president is to try to come in and get things right so that the person that comes behind them will have a clean slate to start. So we're going to continue on that journey. What about nepotism on the university? Can you address that? Uh, actually, no. Is there a policy in place for nepotism on the university's campus? There has always been. <laughs> Is that being uh, used as a tool for governance? Yeah. Do you know uh, of? Husband, wife, uh, mother, daughter. Traditionally, uh, Bethune Cookman has a lot of family members that are grandfathered in. Well, I just said traditionally, uh -huh. Bethune has hired a lot of folks that are related to each other. That's just been tradition over the years. Um, but none of them, nepotism typically is when a person is supervising another right. that's uh, related uh -huh. by blood or marriage. And uh, to my knowledge, I don't have anyone like that, <laughs> to my knowledge. Judge, can you talk specifically about how this university is funded? I know there's concern about federal funding mm -hmm. based on the probationary status. How, what is the exact funding sources for Bethune-Cookman? Uh, it's a tuition-driven institution, meaning that the uh, predominant part of our uh, budget comes from students, uh, comes from their uh, payment of tuition, which then often comes from either direct payments from parents, financial aid, uh, scholarships, things of that nature. That's the bulk of it. In addition to that, we also do receive uh, government grants, uh, government contracts, uh, research dollars, uh, monies from our uh, that come from donations given to us by donors, and gifts that come to the university. But the predominant part of it is, is that we are a tuition driven institution. Okay. What is the relationship that you have with Chairwoman Michelle Scott, Michelle Carter Scott, in regards to the rumors that she has a vendetta towards you, and that's why she wants you terminated? Well. You're, you're hearing what I hear. You're hearing what I hear. And uh, I guess we'll have to see how all of it plays out. Quick one, one question. Uh, in terms of complete transparency, even though you are a private institution, are you willing to uh, to make the all of the records, the meetings, et cetera, open to the public? For uh, Traditionally, the, the uh, Board of, of Trustees meetings have been closed, even to alumni. Is that going to change? Well, it has to be a decision of the board. I, we have made some recommendations. Uh, in fact, after the um, National Alumni Convention back in June, uh, there were some conversations about different ways that we could become more open so people would know what we're doing uh, in the board meetings. But uh, no decision has been made on that as of yet. Uh, we will probably receive an updated report. The board will receive an updated report from its task force on university operations. And uh, I don't know if that's going to be included in there. But there have been several different proposals uh, thrown out on the table on how we can become uh, more visible to the public and let them know what we're doing. What's your position on that? I think that there's room. I think there's ideal room for us to be able to uh, do so. I mean, and that might be uh, having some uh, the meeting open uh, and then dealing with uh, other matters such as in, you know, things like limited, which would be like uh, employment related issues, things like that. That could be done in executive session. but. Um, I think that it's, a, it's certainly a concept we need to look at. I mean, what about furloughs, y'all, Judge? Can you discuss furloughs with us at this point? There's we, been a lot of talk about furloughs. And truth be told, that's all that that was. We explored a number of different things in order to create some cost cutting measures. That was one of them. Okay. But we actually put that on hold. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Very well. Thank you very much. Um, I think for those of you that wanted to see the other report that we gave, the report card. Uh, talked about things we did in the, this past year. Those were available there, but if uh, I'm not so much focused on what we've done already, but looking forward to what we need to do.
to get us to the next level. So stay tuned. Thank you. Hey, oh, wow, good.